Every time we calculate weighted average cost of capital, there are four factors that we need to take into consideration. The first one, when you calculate WAC, you need to use market value, not book value. Use market value of debt and market value of equity. Not book value of debt and book value of equity. The second factor is, every time you calculate WAC, we use net debt, not gross debt. How do we calculate net debt? Net debt is calculated as gross debt minus cash, which is our market value of debt minus cash. Therefore, when we use net debt plus market value of equity, it will give us enterprise value. The third factor we need to take into consideration is we use a constant debt to equity ratio which means we assume that we will have constant debt to equity ratio in our WAC calculation. This means that the percentage of debt doesn't change. Consequently, this happens only at the maturity phase of the company life cycle. The last factor that we need to take into account is we use the target weights, not the current weights. Let's assume that if a company now in the gross phase and I would like to use WAC at maturity phase. I'm not going to use the current weights, but I will use what will be the target weights of this firm at maturity phase after two years or three years or five years. Therefore, we use target weights, not current weights. We know that our assets is composed of debt and equity. Therefore, if I would like to calculate the cost of asset, which means it includes both debt and equity, therefore we call it cost of capital because this is the cost of both debt and equity. Since we know that debt and equity are not equal, which means they don't have the same percentage, consequently we cannot use a simple average, we need to get the weighted average. Therefore, the cost of asset or the cost of capital is equal to the percentage of debt times cost of debt plus percentage of equity times cost of equity. So our pre-tax WAC, our before tax weighted average cost of capital will be the percentage of debt which is debt divided by both debt and equity times cost of debt plus percentage of equity, which is equity divided by both debt and equity times cost of equity. We know that every time we use debt, we pay lower taxes, which we call it tax shield. Therefore, this cost of debt is called before tax cost of debt or pre-tax cost of debt. Therefore, I need to multiply my cost of debt by 1 minus t, and this is called after tax cost of debt or post tax cost of debt. Therefore, we can calculate our after tax WAC or post tax with average cost of capital, which is percentage of debt multiplied by cost of debt multiplied by 1 minus t. The whole item here is called after tax cost of debt plus percentage of equity times cost of equity. Remember, taxes affect debt only, taxes doesn't affect equity. We know that our asset is equal to debt plus equity. Our debt could be classified as loans and bonds. Our equity could be classified as preference shares and common shares. Therefore, we could expand our cost of capital formula or cost of asset formula, which is percentage of debt times cost of debt. So I need to use this part twice because we have debt as loans and bonds. And percentage of equity times cost of equity, we can expand this part twice because we have preference shares and common share. Therefore, our pre-tax WAC or before tax weighted average cost of capital, it will be the percentage of loan, which is the market value of loan, divided by market value of loans plus market value of bonds plus market value of preference shares plus market value of common shares multiplied by the cost of the loan, which is in straight on the loan, plus the percentage of the bond, which is the market value of the bond, divided by market value of the loan, plus market value of the bond, plus market value of preference share, plus market value of common share, multiplied by the cost of the bond, which is called yield to maturity, plus the percentage of preference share, which is the market value of preference share, divided by the market value of loan plus market value of bond plus market value of preference share plus the market value of common share multiplied by the cost of preference share plus the percentage of common shares which is market value of common share divided by market value of loan 
plus market value of bond, plus market value of preference share, plus the market value of common shares, multiplied by the cost of common share. This is our before tax work. In order to calculate after tax work, remember that taxes affected it only, it doesn't affect equity, which means every time we use debt, either loans or bonds, we will pay lower taxes, which we call it tax shield. Therefore, with our cost of loan here, the interest rate on the loan, we need to multiply by one minus T, and this is called after tax cost of loan. With our bond for yield to maturity, I need to multiply it by one minus T, and this is called our after tax yield to maturity. Therefore, our post tax WAC or after tax weighted average cost of capital, it will be the percentage of loan multiplied by interest on the loan multiplied by one minus T. This entire part is called our after tax cost of the loan plus the percentage of the bond multiplied by yield to maturity multiplied by one minus T. Yield to maturity multiplied by one minus T is called after tax yield to maturity plus the percentage of preference share multiplied by the cost of preference share plus the percentage of common share multiplied by the cost of common share. Remember here, taxes doesn't affect equity. Consequently, it doesn't affect neither preference shares nor common shares. 